Hello everybody, this is Shirley and this is So To We Begin Embroidery. Thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to do a little short video. I have a left chest logo I need to do and I already have it hooped on my um, Mighty Hoop, uh, the big frame. I, the hooping station, I guess is what they call it. It's already on there, but I'm just going to show that to you and then I'll show you a little bit about um, set how I went about getting it all set up to do the embroidery. I'm doing a little project that I um, want to just share. Now, some of you, I'm sure, are either thinking about starting a business are already at the beginning of a business or what have you but what I have found is that it's not the easiest thing to do especially finding customers and when you do find a customer how do you give that customer confidence that you can do their work well one of the things you can do is what I am doing uh, for this particular project I had I was approached about uh, well actually I started talking about what I do to a um, a business person and they were very interested in it and had said they were interested in having some work done but nothing really materialized we talked about it for a little bit but it didn't materialize and so I was like how can I get this person interested in going ahead and um, contracting me to do his work so I thought about it I said okay give him a sample you know Sometimes we have to do that. You have to spend a little money to make money. So I decided to go ahead and buy a sweatshirt because he's, he's wanting some of some sweatshirts and hoodies and caps and stuff for his employees. And so I'm going to stitch out this sweatshirt with his logo on it and present it to him to check my workout. So if he likes it, he's already told me if he likes it and he's satisfied, I have the business and that's you know one way of doing it so I just thought I would share that tip and just give you a little brief overview of um, what I'm going to do but before I go forward let me just ask you if you are interested and you like my videos you know what I'm going to ask you please subscribe please hit the like button that thumb up button subscribe and hit the bell to notify you when I have videos that come out, new videos that come out. Make sure that you subscribe, hit the button, and um, the bell for notification. Don't want to forget that. It's very important. Also, I'm going to ask for a special favor as well. When you do look at a video, if you can at least look at it all the way through, that would be so helpful to me. I know sometimes we're busy and we don't have the opportunity to look all the way through a video, but I'm hoping that my focus is going to try to condense my video so they aren't too very long, so you will be more inclined to watch it from beginning to end because I do feel like I do offer information that is useful and you may miss something if you don't look at the entire video and of course please look at it multiple times until you actually understand what it is I'm talking about so that's one thing that I wanted to point out and one other thing that I wanted to point out is that the logo that I have um, that is digitized for me I got it digitized by Z Digitizing. That is a digitizing company that has been in, in um, business for 13 years. They are very fast, efficient, and have, have very good quality work. I have used them uh, for a couple other projects and I have been very happy with the results of what uh, the the results of the digitizing work and how it came out, how it stitched out, and also the fact that it's really fast, it's really quick. They have a very fast turnaround and they guarantee their work and if they, you know, if for some reason it isn't what you want or whatever, they will make sure that they satisfy you. So I just wanted to make sure that you are aware that that is a, um, company that you can feel very confident in using. Also, I do have a link for a 50% off coupon 
below. So if you're interested in any digitizing work, they can do anything that is uh, regarding to embroidery, patches, commercial work, logos, any of those kinds of things. They also have, um, I'm working on a shadow box and one of my upcoming videos, I'm going to show you what they digitized for me for my shadow box for my uh, dog that I had to put to sleep last March. And so in his, in her memory, I'm doing this shadow box and I had some things digitized. So I'll show you that. But even with that, they do excellent work. So remember Z digitizing. The coupon link is in um, at the bottom. And if you click on that link, it'll take you to their site where you can actually put in your order and it will give you a 50% off coupon for your first order. So don't forget about Z digitizing. So without further ado, let me move on and show you uh, the logo production. So as you can see, I have this sweatshirt already on my um, shirt frame and I, this is the 5.5 by 5.5 Mighty Hoop that I have it and this is an extra large shirt and according to recommendation, extra large shirt for men and it's for a man is um, D R E 20 and I have this on D 20 and what that is that gives you the neck is the D and the position that is on the chest part the neck part is the D and the position on the chest part is number 20 and the good thing about using mighty hoops for left chest, chest logos is that if you're using the same shirt or <clears throat> sweatshirt hoodie or whatever the same brand and the same size you can know exactly where to put it and every shirt is going to be the same because if you're using extra large shirts which this is a I believe it's a Hanes as long as I have Hanes extra large it's going to be D or E20, D or E20. I'm using D, so it's going to be D20, D20, D20 for all of the shirts that I do. And they should be in the exact same spot every time. So that is one of the best reasons for getting a Mighty Hoop, especially if you're doing left chest logos. So now that we have it all hooped, then I'm going to move it to the machine. And I have my thread set up. I'm going to set my threads up. I haven't done it yet. I put them on the machine, but I haven't actually um, programmed the machine yet to stitch out the thread uh, for the design. So that will be the next thing that we do. Okay, I have my sweatshirt on the machine now, and I'm getting ready to um, start the program, the, the 1055X for the thread colors. Now the first thing I do, everybody doesn't do this, but I guess I am just uh, very cautious. I always like to do the camera first just to see where everything is on my machine. I want to make sure that it is going to stitch where it's supposed to stitch. So I always do the camera and as you can see it is in, let me get the stylus here, you can see it is, you see it is in the middle. So I got that. Now the other thing that I do, and everybody doesn't do this, but if you're using an aftermarket hoop, which Mighty Hoops are, it is extremely important that you trace. To make sure that your needle is not going to hit your frame. So I'm going to do a uh, trace now and check and see how that's going to stitch out as far as not hitting my hoop. Perfect. I'm satisfied with that. That is not going to hit my hoop. So I move on, hit embroidery. Now I'm ready to program the colors. 
Now, everybody doesn't do this, but this is how I do it. I figured out this is the best way that works for me because I do, I don't have set colors that I use continuously. Uh, I do all kinds of different designs and, and what have you with multiple colors. So I'm constantly changing out my thread. So because I do that, I and then I don't always use um, a particular brand. I'm trying to move all the way over to Floriani, but right now I have some Floriani, some Sulky, some Madeira, and most of my thread is Metro EMB. So as I use up thread and buy new thread, I'm buying all Floriani thread. And once I get all Floriani thread, then it'll be easier for me to do a conversion um, from whatever uh, thread is being used when the design is digitized over to what color that will fall into as far as the Floriani. What I basically do, to be perfectly honest about it, is play it by ear. Well, not play it by ear, but by sight. I look at the color thread and I try to match it up as best as possible. This particular design, which was designed by, um, digitized by Z Digitizing, used Madeira Classic 40 weight. And so it has five colors, but it has eight different um, stop sequences. And so what I'm going to do is hit the magic wand. And what the magic wand does, it allows me to assign a color to each um, sequence based upon where on my machine is that particular color. So number the first color to be used is white and that is on number one so then i hit number two and that color is going to be red which is number three on my machine and then for number three the next color is royal royal blue and that is going to be uh, my royal blue is going to be number seven and that is one two three so now I'm on number four number four is white so that's one number five is a darker blue that is going to be number nine and number six is white so back to one number seven is a Laramar blue according to Madeira which I have selected I don't know what the number is but that is going to be on my number seven needle and then number eight which is the last one is that white and that's around the United States so those are the colors. So again, one is white, three is, is um, one is white, and my red is number three. My royal ble blue is number, number seven. That's not royal, yeah. Number four is, one, two, three, four, white, which is one. And number five is blue, a deeper blue, that's number nine. Number six is white. Number seven is the Laramar blue, which is number, okay, I got a mistake. And that's one reason why you need to go through it again, because I have seven twice and it shouldn't be. Number seven is correct for number seven but for number one two three one two three it is supposed to be four 
number three is supposed to be four. So let me make sure I hit that. That's supposed to be one. Now go up here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Number three. One, two, three. That's supposed to be number four. So that should be it. I always double check my colors because that can mess it up. I've had that happen before and I have messed up different um, projects because I didn't have the right color on there in the right sequence and so I always try my best to double check and make sure that my numbers my colors are set up the way they are supposed to be set up and make sure that it is coming out the way I want it to come out and then go from there so everything is set up so once you do that and you're satisfied with the sequence then you can hit OK and you're actually ready to start so everything the number one is going to start is going to take about I have it at speed of 600 and that's going to take about 55 minutes and here it tells you it's eight different stops and it's a total of 27,083 stitches so if I put this faster then the time would go down if I have it on 751 minutes if I have it on 849 947 and a thousand is 45 minutes but I'm going to go back down to my 600 where I'm comfortable actually I might <clears throat> put it on 500 just to get started with it to make sure that it's going to stitch the way I want it to stitch and, and be comfortable and uh, so that's going to take roughly 60 minutes or one hour so that's where we are and I will get started on this and we will see how well it's going to stitch out and I am very confident that it's going to stitch out really pretty I did speed it up to 600, so it should be done in 55 minutes if I keep it on that. It's stitching very good right now, and so I will um, just watch it, make sure that it's stitching okay, no issues so far. What I do know that I want to mention is that when you have like a sweatshirt or especially a hoodie which is heavier you may need to use that extender arm that they have to take some of the weight off of the garment so it would stitch okay i don't have that extender arm i do have a table but i'm considering that extender arm the extender arm can be purchased either from brother or it can be purchased from Mighty Hoop. I think they're around a couple hundred bucks. None of these hoops are cheap, unfortunately, but they do serve its purpose. And um, the purpose of the extender arm is to take some of the weight off of the garment when you have a heavy garment and you can't actually put it on the table. So, um, it goes into the arm, into the, um, I forgot what they call this thing, but the, the extender that where the bobbin is, I guess is the best way to, to tell you where the arm where the bobbin is, it goes over that and then it extends out. So with that in mind, it might be something that you might consider doing. Of course, whenever I get one, I will show it to you and let you know how it's working for me. But uh, that is something that um, I am thinking about getting at some point. I did see a demo of it over the weekend, and I do see the necessity for it. Like I said, initially, I didn't think that I needed it. But after looking at 
what it really does and its purpose. I'm convinced that it's something that I probably need to do, especially if I'm going to be doing sweatshirts and hoodies and jacket backs and uh, especially jacket backs that don't open up. If they open up, you can do the table. The table works perfectly. But if they don't open up, if you're doing like a hoodie that doesn't open up or something like that, and this sweatshirt doesn't open up, then an extender arm is something that is, is almost necessary because you do not want that weight on your garment while it's stitching because it can get it out of register and you don't want that to happen because then you're not going to have a, a, a very good looking design when it finally stitches out. So I'm going to go ahead and let this stitch out and then I will come back and let you know how it looks and we will go from there. It is just about done. I have exactly one minute before this project is completed. And I'll be able to take it off the booth and look at it and see exactly how well it sticks out. But from what I can see from here, it looks pretty good. We'll see in a minute. I kept it on the 600 stitches per minute speed without any thread break. Only one thing that I did is I forgot to check my bobbin. So I did have to change the bobbin in the middle, well actually at the beginning of the stitching, which is something you should always check your bobbin before you start your project. So we're coming up to the last few stitches. Actually, this is the end of it. It is now completed. Take it off the machine. And get a good look. Here is the completed project. As you can see, it looks really good. It did a very good job. And again, this was digitized by Z Digitizing. And I got it back in 24 hours. Um, they usually, their quickest they can do it is in four hours. And they are open 24 hours a day. And you can get in touch with them or get in touch with support at any time. So, just want to let you know how well it's stitched out. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, this is the finished product. As you can see here, it is a left chest, left chest logo on an extra large sweatshirt. And... Again, it looks really, really, really good. Really good. So, I am very pleased with how it looks. Hopefully, my potential customer will be as well. And I guess the only other tidbit that I want to give before I sign off is, as I mentioned, hopefully you heard me say that... Um, when you're starting a project, let me move back because it looks like my head's getting cut off. <laughs> but <clears throat> when you're starting a project, always remember to check your bobbin first. I did have to stop. Um, I guess I was in about 10 minutes and I had to stop and, well, the machine stopped and I had to put in a new bobbin, which is not an issue, but you can save yourself that headache 
if you check your bobbin first and hopefully you won't have that issue especially if you're doing a big project or if you're doing a project and you have the table up now that's when it gets tricky so always uh, oil your machine uh, every day or the that bobbin every day I have noticed that I have forgotten that a couple of times so I'm having to remind you as well as myself to all my uh, bobbin area daily and also like I said always check your bobbin to make sure that you have a full bobbin when you start a project sometimes a project is big enough where you have to actually change your bobbin regardless but it does help if you uh, do it before the project starts then you don't have to worry about having to maneuver and move the clothing and the material whatever you're doing to get up under there to put that bobbin in there so that is pretty much the tip for today I hope this was enjoyable as far as learning a little bit about Z digitizing for one thing and also left check chest logo how to um, assign the sequence of your thread if you uh, want to do it manually like I do. I do it manually all the time. There's nothing wrong with it. I see a lot of people put questions on the face on Facebook about their colors and how to get it to go to this color and that color, which uh, I don't quite understand the question because maybe because I'm always manually assigning my colors. I don't have that issue. I don't do it automatically. That has always confused me. So what makes it easy for me is to just go ahead and manually assign it based upon where on my tin needle machine I have put a color. If I need, like my white is always on one, my black is always on two, my red is always on three, and if I have a navy blue, that's always on four. The rest of them I switch out. I can even switch out those four as well if I don't if if the design does not call for those colors or all of those colors but again I take control of the assignment not the machine and you do that manually by using your magic wand so hopefully that's understandable that information is in your manual as I mentioned read your manual if you have the um, um, I can't think of the book right now. <laughs> I forgot. I haven't looked at it in a while, but um, there's information in your manual that tells you about the magic wand and what have you. And I will get back uh, on the manual because I know I was going through that information and, and trying to help walk everybody through the information that's in the manual and how to do it and uh, the playbook that was what I was trying to think of the playbook also the brother uh, PR 1055 X playbook if you don't have a 1055 then there is a brother's 1050 playbook that's less expensive but either way it goes it does have a disc in it with some videos on it and um, it's a training book so with that plus your manual you should be able to figure out how to do most of anything on your machine there are a few things that may be not quite as clear because I'm still working on the design center and how to maneuver through that it's a lot that you can do and learn but it's something that takes time so I'm working through that but I will be getting back into working with the manual and the playbook now that I'm relatively settled into my new area I'll get back on onto that um, that uh, project so um, that's all I have for you today thank you for stopping by again please subscribe hit that subscribe button I need that give me a thumbs up if you like it tell your friends and colleagues to look at my video to subscribe to my video and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when a new video comes up and if you are in need of some digitizing quick turnaround digitizing they can do it within four hours if you request it and they have 24 7 service 
they are uh, high quality. I'm satisfied with their work. I'm sure you will be. And there is a link below that will give you a 50% off coupon for your first order. So check them out. See if it's going to benefit your business or your hobby. And um, have fun. Thank you for stopping by and I will see you next time.